Moving to order. Uh, I don't. I don't think we're going to be joined by any other uh, members today, so I'm uh, flying solo. So um, let's just move forward. Items one and two are uh, receiving files. How do you, how do you do receiving files when it's just me? Uh, we usually read the item into the record, and then we just receive file afterwards. Okay, I can do that. Without um, in your huh? Yeah, you can move it as a recommendation from the chair. Oh, to receive okay. and file the items. Okay, it would be my recommendation to receive and file items one and two since the nominees have withdrawn their uh, withdrawn their candidacy. Right. So, okay. And would you like me to read the items into the record? Yes, please. Okay. Item number one, communication from the mayor relative to the appointment of Ms. Zita M. Danielle to the Rent Adjustment Commission for the term ending May 20, 2014. Item number two, Communications from the mayor relative to the appointment of Reverend D. Clyde Odin Jr. to the Los Angeles Homeless Services Authority Commission for the term ending June 30, 2017. And item two was also continued from HCED on October 31st, 2012. Okay, uh, item number three. Okay, item number three. Motion Weezar Coretz relative to designating the Public Works Bureau of Sanitation as the fiscal manager and implementing agent of the city's Brownfields Revitalization Program and authorization for the general managers of the Community Development Department and Sanitation to enter into an interdepartmental memorandum of understanding and to establish accounts and provide necessary controller's instructions for implementation by the controller. That is item number three. Okay, does anybody want to present on this? Uh, I'm uh, a little confused about this item. This is a this is a development item, and I'm not understanding why we want to place it in sanitation. The issue of brownfields has to do with redevelopment, and um, so please explain. Uh, good morning. And I apologize that, that that we didn't have this conversation before the meeting, but. Nobody approached me on it, so. Uh, good morning, Council Member. Alex Hello for the Bureau of Sanitation. Um, a couple of years ago, the Council made a decision to move the Environmental Affairs Division from being its own department into the Bureau of Sanitation. One of the functions that was being done by the Environmental Affairs Department was the Brownfield. Uh, at that time, Nuna, who was also running the program for uh, Environmental Affairs, was managing the Brownfields for the city. Basically, she was uh, looking at the sites, gathering grants, working on different elements, and putting them together in order to clean up the sites. So when that function was moved into the Bureau of Sanitation, uh, the, uh, we are looking only at the protection of public health and, and the environment. But you said when it was moved into sanitation? A couple years ago. The, the, this was moved a couple years ago into the Bureau of Sanitation, the program. Mm -hmm. the, the entire, well, actually, the majority of EAD staff was moved into the Bureau of Sanitation. Okay. So that function moved into with NUNA. So then why, do we, why do we have to do this? Well, basically the CRA no longer exists. At that time, the Bureau was working with the CRA. You said the function moved, but you're telling me that the CRA was doing the function. Hmm? So the function didn't move. It was at CRA. Okay. Okay, there's a difference between the environmental concerns and the fiscal agent. Yes. Right. So... I need to understand why. I, I think the responsibility of the fiscal agent has to do with redevelopment. And the Bureau of Sanitation's function has to do with the science. So I'm not understanding why we want to move the fiscal agent function to sanitation. And I think that would have a, a, a negative impact on, on the development program. Um, if I may, Karen Coca with the Bureau of Sanitation. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the Brownfields program has always been an interagency program throughout the right. city. The way that they, they set it up uh, was uh, everybody has a seat at the table and the Brownfields uh, task force actually makes the decisions about what sites get cleaned and yeah, how they Yeah, but the primary function, let's understand, the primary function is to eliminate blight. That is correct. Which is a community redevelopment function. Now, that, I know, I recognize they don't exist. But you would think it would be a natural uh, for community development. Well, the community not 
not just the issue of cleaning up the site, but what are you going to do with it? Why, are, why did they create the Brownfields Act in the federal government in the first place, if not to develop in blighted areas? Yes, I... And I don't think that's a function of sanitation. No, it is not. Uh, the action that we're asking for simply allows us to continue to clean up these brownfield sites and then they're released to whoever owns them or is, is dealing with them so that they can be redeveloped. We're not asking to go through and redevelop or be responsible for that function. That's exactly We're, my point. I want to know who's doing that. May I? Yes. Um, Nuna Tersibashian, Bureau of Sanitation. Um, to clarify your question, we are not, we're not dealing with redevelopment development in any way. The, the function that was moved from EAD, Environment Affairs Department, to Bureau of Sanitation was to address contamination and protect human health and environment. So this program has been uh, going for years, and uh, this little change is not something new we're asking for, because back in EAD, uh, Brownfields program uh, was managing the program and was uh, directed the program towards uh, moving the sites, uh, cleaning the sites, moving towards the redevelopment. So this element is uh, what we're asking uh, it sounds fiscal, but what, what we're doing, we just want to continue to have access to those funding to continue clean up those sites. It has nothing to do with redevelopment. We have a number of sites. No, but the, but the funding mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. comes out of the Community Development Block Grant. Community... For Brownfields Program. Please. Community Development. Right. For Brownfields Program. Years ago... No, 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 no. You're, you're, you're misinterpreting the, the purpose of brownfields. The notion of brownfields is that there is blight in communities that needs right. to be cleaned up for the purposes of community right. development. So That's why the funding is coming from the Community right. Development Block Grant. Correct. So you're not explaining to me who's going to do that function we to meet be, the obligations of the grant. We, can, we will, by saying we, it's like Kieran uh, Koka mentioned, interdepartmental effort. By saying we will be continuing the same thing that we were doing for years as a role of Brownfields program, addressing contaminated sites. As of today... Um, but you're not doing... <laughs> okay. Today we have sites that... Excuse me, excuse me. Uh -huh. I chair this meeting. Okay. Please don't interrupt when I, when I want to speak. Okay. Because you're not hitting my, you're not answering my question. This is an issue of redevelopment, taking properties, cleaning them up, and then redeveloping. If you don't know, if you don't have a strategy as to the priorities relative to brownfield cleanup in, for the purposes of development, then how are you going to clean? You're just going to randomly pick which, which items you're going to clean up? We need, the, the fiscal agent's responsibility is to manage the collective wisdom of the city in order to, to identify the priorities for redevelopment of sites that have, been, uh, that have been blighted by environmental contamination. That's correct. That's the purpose of this grant. I'm not hearing from sanitation how they're going to perform that function. All you're telling me is you're going to clean up properties, but you're not telling me what the strategy is in, in terms of prioritization of those properties. In terms of development, community development, which this is a community development block grant. If, so if somebody can answer that question for me, you know, I'm open-minded, but that's the weakness of this, this proposal. And it's concurred by uh, Jan Perry. Uh, she's saying it should go to economic development. We don't have an economic development department, but we do have a community development department. I'm not getting this. The, the prioritization, okay, the sites, the selection of the sites is, is done through um, Suggestion of the sites that come from many factors. A lot of them come from the council offices. They identify sites in their in their communities. They also come through the um, folks that do Karen, handle the. Karen, please. Okay, I'm sorry. I have tremendous respect for you. You know that. I know the process. I've used it many times. General Motors, Price Fister. I've used the process. But it was uh, the collective wisdom of the city, not just one department deciding which sites to do and, which, where, and, and, and to have control of the money. Correct. I think that's a problem. In other words, 
somebody's got to be, there's got to be a balance of interest here. The purpose of this money primarily is not cleanup. It's primarily for community development. Who is going to have that responsibility? Where's the other side of the, the, the balance here? Planning department? Uh, housing department? Uh, community development? Sounds like community development should be the place. Where are they? So this isn't ready for prime time. And maybe it's the best idea, but, but I, am not, uh, I am not understanding how it's the best idea. Because my primary interest as chair of the Housing and Community Economic Development Committee is housing and community economic development. And when it comes to community development block grant funds, I need to ensure the integrity of the community development purpose. That's my, that's my, my responsibility. All you're telling me is you want to clean up properties, but you're not telling me why is that, in, in terms of priorities for the city, how you're going to vanguard our interests relative to community development. I'm not hearing anything like that. No, but you're right, Councilman. We, uh, we're not ready for that one because we met with CDD and they felt with the CRA was dissolving. They wanted somebody to step in and do the cleanup. And our effort was only designated onto what we do best. But who's doing the operating. community development? But that's what I'm saying. At that time, the, CR, the CDD, when we met with them and with okay. the CRA, so do you hear, do you hear, do you hear, I understand what you're saying is that's not what we intend. But do you hear the, 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 uh, the lunacy of that? We have a community development department and they're saying they don't know who should manage the community well, development asked, block grant? They, I think they asked sanitation to step in and do and help in the cleanup. I have no and, problem. And you sh you should do the to, cleanup. To I, I fought for the Environmental Affairs Department to have that function in sanitation. But, but that's cleanup. Right. Right. Who's doing the thinking about community development? They're still involved. CDD will be involved. We're not taking... I know they're involved, uh -huh. but I they should be the lead. They I are. think that it, 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 what it sounds like is that um, we need to come back with the community development department to address the, the yeah. big picture yeah. items because clearly we are, are only a very tiny portion of what happens in the entire program. And we can't answer the broad questions. Okay, that's yeah. I um, ultimately, I do believe this will end up in in a new economic development department, which is where it should be. Um, but I'm not convinced that In other words, for example, it says enter into an MOU. I'd like to see a draft MOU before we, we ask them to do that. And I'm not understanding why sanitation has to be the fiscal agent. Those are the two major questions I have. I, I understand your function but I don't understand why you need to be the fiscal agent and why, because these are community development block grant funds. Yeah. And they're under the jurisdiction of this committee. And I want to make it clear that this committee retains that, that authority because this should be driving community development. Um, so those are, the, those are the, the two questions I have. Why? I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me why CDD is not taking a more prominent role here, particularly when we're trying to re redesign an entire depar department. And uh, CDD will still be making these decisions. Maybe, perhaps, we need to reward. I would hope the council would make the decisions. Yeah, because because we only the, with with this motion approved, the only thing will change. We will be able to go and clean up those sites. <clears throat> CDD will make the decisions. We are not uh, asking for authority to make decisions on whether which sites to clean. The decisions are making uh, with the whole team, including CDD, CLA, mayor's office, and council district. We, we don't have that authority to choose a site and go and clean it. We only clean sites that come to us, come to Brownfield as requests from different council offices, mayor's office, etc. So this is only giving us um, 
a way, a mechanism of sending our contractors to clean sites that right now are threatening. threatening. For example, Chatsworth Park been closed for years, you know that, and they're waiting, seating, CD12 is seating and waiting for us to get uh, the access to this funding to go and clean up the contamination at the park. It's just an example. I have a list of sites that was made even before CRA's elimination to address using this funding. So all we're asking is to give us that authority to continue what we've been doing all these years. We're not asking for authority to make the decisions of whether which sites to clean and which sites to redevelop. That's not our role. We're only moving one step closer to redevelopment process. I think any, everybody who understands it should be supportive of this program. Right now, we have a number of sites that on the list are contaminated and approved by CDBG, by CDD, and the whole Brownfields team to move forward. And because of this motion, we're just sitting and waiting. No, there's no reason why mm -hmm. a specific motion can't uh, address the Chatsworth Park issue. There's no, reason why, why, there's no reason why uh, funds can't be designated specifically for Chatsworth Park. There's no reason. The council makes the decision. And, and there's no reason why that can't be done. Okay. You know, this is, this is, uh, this is you're, you're, you're giving a large segment of responsibility for this uh, pile of money to one unit of the wheel. And I, I'm, not, I'm not understanding the, the balancing interests of community development. Is Chatsworth Park the city's top priority? I think it's a priority. Because is it the it's top priority? That's, a, that's an issue that community development should be coming before me community telling Community development was approved, approved the site years ago and was on the list. We're not the only ones who are approving sites. We, it's, it's a combination of people who are sitting down, including mm. CDD, including mayor's office, including CLA, including council offices that are approving the site. You know we, we have a number of sites in CD7 previously that were cleaned up using this money. But now, because CRA is no longer, we can't access this anymore. That's but but I'm, not, that's, I'm not understanding why CDD isn't the fiscal agent. CDD that's my question. In, I, maybe, maybe the president can tell us. Do you, are you familiar with that? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking okay. about. Okay. <laughs> item number, item number, Give me at least 45 seconds yeah. to get Item it. number three is uh, related to uh, the Brownfields program, uh, which is intended to clean up divided sites uh, contaminated uh, environmentally. The sanitation department has historically played the role of doing the cleanup and analysis on these sites, but this is a community development uh, notion. It's coming out of community development block grants. The recommendation is to make the sanitation the fiscal agent uh, because CRA went down. Uh, Jan Perry is, is saying she's okay with that, but um, it ultimately should land in the Economic Development Department. My concern is that the, the uh, priorities that should be established should be established by a team that is led by community development, because these are community development block grants. Hmm. I'm not understanding why sanitation wants or needs to be the fiscal agent. Well, then maybe we should not move forward and get some more that was my, that answers. Was my I would support that. It makes okay. that's the common sense. Okay, then then approach. Let I, I need to hear from CDD at a minimum as to why uh, they they can't perform this function uh, and and why um, they want to give uh, the entire fiscal responsibility to uh, sanitation. But ultimately, I do agree it should go to the economic development uh, department. Uh, hopefully, that we can create. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And and again, if there are specific projects that are urgent. Somebody can submit a motion to, to give, the council has the authority to spend that money. Okay. okay. Thank you for Thank the you. suggestion. Okay. Um, I have number four. Oh, have number four. pardon me, Mr. Chair. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue this continue item. Yeah. Thank you. Item number four, LHD and CEO report and resolution. Can I jump in for a second, and I'm sorry. Should we... I know we're going to continue that item, but should we give them some uh, official instructions to come back? I mean, I, well, actually, I, I think we should just meet with them. 
Oh, okay. Uh, in between. Okay. Next, it shouldn't take more than two weeks to figure this out. Okay, I'm good. Sorry. Item number four. LEHD and CAO report and resolution relative to authorization to submit an application to the State of California Department of Housing and Community Development for an allocation of Cal Home Grant Program funds of approximately $1.5 million and authority to execute the grant agreement. Good morning, Council Members Madeline Rackley with the CAO. Um, the uh, Los Angeles Housing Department has submitted eight Cal Home Grant applications and been awarded eight uh, awards uh, between the years of 2000 and 2011, uh, totaling 9.25 million. And during that time, they've been able to assist approximately 157 first-time low-income home buyers to purchase homes. Uh, this uh, request is to authorize the department to apply for an additional 1.5 million to, uh, from the Cal Home uh, program, and if uh, they receive that funding, they would be able to assist an additional 25 first-time low-income home buyers. So that would bring the total to about 180. Um, so the CAO would recommend that uh, the council authorize a general manager or designee to submit the application uh, to the state and authorize the general manager to negotiate and execute the agreement if they receive an award. And uh, we would also ask that the council adopt the attached resolution, which is necessary as part of the application. And then um, instruct the general manager of the housing department to come back uh, uh, and report back to you if they are, in fact, awarded any of these funds with the amount and any other instructions that might be required. Um, the, the deadline is coming up. It's in March, so they just needed to um, get your authority to execute this. There is no impact to the general fund. There are no matching funds required. Um, this is completely funded by the grant funds. Okay. Mr. Wesson, do you have any questions? Any, any public comment? Nope. Okay, as the uh, author of the legislation that created the Cal Home Program, very happy to hear. So, um, they've, they've been very successful. It'll be our recommendation uh, for the council to approve this matter. Okay, you're approving the CAO report, correct? Okay. Okay. Item number five. Item number five. LEHD report and CAO report relative to authorization to execute three-month amendments to various current technical services contracts for the term beginning January 1st, 2012 through March 31st, 2013. Council members, I'm back. Um, the, the Housing Department released a request for proposals last October to establish new contracts for technical services. They have received 23 proposals and they are in the process of reviewing and scoring the, uh, those uh, proposals. And I understand that I'm going to be receiving their recommendations momentarily. So the request before you is to extend the current technical services contracts through the end of March so that uh, there can be continuity of service before the new contracts go into place. The list of 16 contractors that they would like to extend is part of attachment A. There's no additional funding required. It's just an extension of the term. I don't have a problem. Do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay, then we will also recommend Okay, which report? Uh, the CAO report. The CAO report, okay, fine. Okay. For approval. Item number six. Thank you. Item number six, Department of City Planning report relative to the calendar year 2011 annual progress report on implementation of the housing element for year 20, 2006 through 2014. Good morning, council members. Uh, my name is Matt Kolesny. I'm with the citywide unit in the community uh, city planning department. I am the project manager for the housing element update, which is currently underway, as well as the 2011 annual progress report for the housing element before you today. Uh, of course, we work closely with our colleagues in the LA housing department on both efforts. Uh, as you may know, the housing element is part of the city's general plan and serves as the primary policy guide to address the city's housing and growth needs. Uh, the annual progress report in front of you is a tool to track and monitor progress in achieving the city's housing goals as laid out in the housing element. We use the guidelines and forms adopted by the state 
to complete the APR. It includes information on the status of the housing element and its implementation programs, as well as the progress in meeting the regional housing needs. We find the APR is also very helpful in updating the housing element, which, uh, which I mentioned we're doing right now. I'll just mention what I think is a highlight of the APR, and that's right there in the first couple pages, Table A. Uh, it's the basically annual building activity report summary. This is a listing of all residential projects that were issued in an affordability covenant in 2011 by the LA Housing Department and also received a building permit that year. So if a project got a covenant in 2011 and was permitted in 2012, it would be carried over to the next year. According to this methodology, in 2011, the city produced a total of 1,251 affordable restricted units for mostly very low and low-income households. Added to this is an additional 5,915 market rate housing units permitted in 2011, resulting in a grand total of 7,166 housing units that we can count towards our goals. This was a big increase from the previous year uh, in 2000 where there was, we, we totaled about just about 3,000 units. Uh, there's a couple other tables that I'd be happy to elaborate on if uh, requested, but uh, really the meat of the document, the pages and pages, is Table C. This is a compilation of all of the city's 225 housing-related programs that are in the current housing element. We work very closely with our colleagues in all the city departments to update this information annually and compile the information. It's really a unique and comprehensive snapshot of everything the city is doing around housing. I won't, of course, go through uh, all the programs, but I'm, again, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Finally, I, I thought I might just conclude by mentioning, again, that the housing element update is well underway for the 2013-2021 uh, planning period. We've uh, already concluded a thorough review of all of our housing programs, objectives, and policies through a task force of uh, about 50 housing experts and practitioners that helped us go through all these and make uh, really useful comments. We've also uh, completed a thorough housing needs, housing needs assessment based on the most recent census data and the housing funding that's available right now, uh, which as you may know does not look very good. Um, we're working now with all the relevant city agencies to evaluate and revise all our programs based on what we've, uh, based on the research we've done this far, and we expect to have a draft uh, very soon for that, and that will come back before your department in the next couple months, in front of your committee, excuse me. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, any questions? Uh, I think uh, it's, it's, a, it's a, a plan that uh, is hopeful that the economy turns around in general and, uh, and actually we would hope to exceed our goals but uh, it's dependent on that economy. Um, so um, we'll send this to council with a recommendation for approval. Um, it would just be a known file. The known report file. is provided for informational purposes only. Okay, then that will be the order. Thank you. We have no public comment cards on this. I have two public comments. That, that's the uh, book of our, that is the, our agenda. Yes, you have right. gone through the whole okay, agenda. So we'll move on to public comment. Uh, Robert Cherno. Hey, did they call Reyes? Did they call Aiden Reyes? Good morning. My name is Robert Cherno. I'm a landlord in the city of Los Angeles. I have a few rent control properties. Uh, I came. Uh, Mr. Chair, to your staff with some concerns with the way that the housing department is running the programs for both rent stabilization and code enforcement. I think there needs to be a complete review. Um, I've received on numerous uh, years the bills after the due date, and then there's a requirement of 150% penalty fees. Last year I put in a request that they review it. They lost my request. Uh, I've been making phone calls to the general manager for close to a year now. I don't get any response at all. I went in there yesterday to pay this year's bill. It was the first time in years they sent it on time. They tell me that because I live in one of the units and I, it requires an exemption, they've changed the rules that even though the bill isn't due to the end of this month, that if you are a landlord that wants an exemption, you have to pay it before January 31st. Otherwise, you have to pay even though you live in that unit. And obviously, rent stabilization and code enforcement is not going to be enforcing on my own personal uh, home. Uh, I think it's appalling that I and other landlords are paying these fees. While I was there yesterday at your Wilshire Boulevard office, landlord after landlord was coming in and asking for the exemption and being told that they have to pay it anyway because they had till the 31st of January. Um, I'm very concerned with this kind of uh, actions taking place. I'm also concerned that I have very expensive units. 
that in 1978 did not qualify as luxury units. My tenants are paying close to $4,000 a month. They make over a quarter million dollars a year, and yet the whole purpose of rent control is to protect low income, and they don't qualify as low income. So I think the entire program needs to be reviewed. There's also the problem with the rent stabilization fees that can only be, half of it can only be recovered from the tenants during the month of June, which require a 30-day notice and a copy of the certificate that you've paid, and they send out the certificates after that period so you can't even recover. So I was told by your staff that I had to come here today to ask for this to be agendized and that staff look into this, and I'm asking you to ask staff to place this on an upcoming agenda, please. Uh, my staff disputes your, your uh, uh, interpretation of the conversation. He said certainly you can come to public comment, but uh, we, we really don't have any plans to agendize this issue. We've, we've had uh, numerous hearings uh, in and around this, this issue um, over the course of the several years that I've been on this committee. Uh, and uh, uh, we've had different reports on, on this issue, but uh, we'll be happy to have my staff work with you uh, and the department to see if we can help you with your particular problems. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Michael Millen. Millman. Good morning, Michael Millman, M-I-L-L-M-A-N. I'm with the Apartment Association of Greater Los Angeles. I come here to apologize to the committee and the chair. Sixty days ago, I promised that if you gave me a continuance of 60 days, that I would deliver up on or before Valentine's a comprehensive program for bootleg units. And I failed to do so, and I say I'm sorry. Uh, my colleague, um, Mr. Greenberg, has been working on it. We've gotten excellent cooperation from the tenant rights groups and from LAHD. I told Harold Greenberg, you need to come here with a comprehensive deal where planning and building and safety signed off. And uh, to date, we don't have that document because I felt the committee wanted to see all the players buy in. Uh, we're close but we're not there yet. And I said to Harold, you've got to bring something to the committee in writing that deals with everybody's concern so we can get it done. As I said before, there are no free passes. Everything's going to be up to code. It will be an amnesty. We're going to bring the, the 70,000 units under the jurisdiction of LHD. It will be rent control, low rents. You know, we're going to ask for a little bit of consideration on rear setbacks, side setbacks, and parking but it will be perfectly safe, no free passes. But I failed to meet my promise, and I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, please include uh, Gerald Gubaton on my staff in, uh, in the development of this proposal, uh, because, uh, I mean, we, to just present it to the committee, uh, it, you know, we could probably avoid uh, hurdles if, if we're included in the in the development of the proposal. And it doesn't have to be perfect, and it doesn't have to uh, have everybody sign off as long as we're continuing the conversation and, uh, and trying to move toward that uh, direction. Yeah. So uh, thank, you. thank you for your comments. Yeah. I, I have a couple. Of, these are not ready for prime time. This is not to go up in the Sistine Chapel, but I can give it to your clerk, and you can see at least our good faith efforts moving. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I, we don't have any more public comment cards, and uh, we've completed all our business, so this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Good.